Hello, this is Glenn Durrant, the three-time BDO World Darts Champion. You're listening to the 12th Man Podcast at Red Army Radio. Hope the border. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 12th Man Podcast. It is a special this week. We have got guests, or guests anyway. We've got me, Danny Chapman. We've got Josh Jones. Hi, everyone. We've got Steve Jackson. Evening. Hi, Steve. We've got Jamie Dalgano. Guys. He's not a foreign import. We've just brought him. (laughs) (laughs) We've also got John Donovan. Hello there. And for our guests, we're just going to introduce ourselves. We are the 12th Man Supporters Group. We do the podcast uh, mainly on a Tuesday afternoon, around about 8 o'clock. We're mainly North Santees and ticket holders. We do take a bus to all the away games. Try and get two buses sometimes. And we also try to help the club out as best we can, even if it's just putting our banners in the riverside, as we've seen during these lockdown times. And then also shout and scream and get behind the lads as much as we can. We always try to just do our best for the club, really. Um, so, our special guest this week is the man that's managed 14 different clubs, won four playoffs, eight promotions, two titles, managed over 1,500 games, and he picks our beloved Middlesbrough team every week. It's Mr. Neil Warnock himself. Hi. So, you all right, Neil? Good evening, yeah. Good evening, lads. Yeah. Nice to speak to you. That's some introduction, that, with that list of... It is, yeah. And I remember your lot. I mean, not not um, the last time. When I was at Rotherham, I remember you taking over by hand that goal and the noise you made that night. I think that was the day that Karanka walked out the next day, didn't he? Yeah, and what did you do? Was that the something like that? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I you just you should have been four up, and then yeah. at half time I went in, I laced into my lot, and you know, and uh, they come out and revitalised really, and we deserved to win in the end. But it was a, uh, I showed me you know, the noise was unbelievable, and uh, I've had that a couple of times. I had it at the old old um, the old ground when I was in the playoffs with Notts County. And we played the second leg up there and bloody hell, the noise, the atmosphere was, you know, electric, really. Yeah, it's one thing we are known for, like our away travelling support. But that Rotherham trip you've just been on about there, that was, I think we took about two, two and a half thousand sold out capacity. Yeah, you filled it all completely. And, uh, you know, the chairman were ever so pleased and uh, they were more concerned about that than the result. <laughs> <laughs> but you did have a, you, you, you really got behind them and, and you know, and it... Uh, I remember, I remember Steve Gibson texting me after that game uh, on my way home. And he said something like, you know, I bloody knew at uh, half time that you'd beat us, you lot. But, you know, he said, I knew you'd get them going or something. And because uh, I always used to say to him, you know, uh, don't expect too much tomorrow. You know, he's sending me texts every time we played them. And uh, so that was quite funny, that. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to be here. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've got to tell you the truth. I miss the fans. Uh, but hopefully, you know, if everybody looks after the soul, we might be able to get some in at Christmas. Oh, fingers yeah. crossed. I think that's what we're all hoping for, isn't it, lads? Yeah, yeah definitely. It certainly is. Uh, have, you, have you missed... Oh, you've mentioned it a couple of times. You've missed being booed by the crowd. Yeah, that's usually the home fans. <laughs> 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 well, we were, we were all ready at Bournemouth to give you a, a right good welcome. And then, uh, obviously, you, you got the coronavirus. I know, I, I still don't know how I got it like, but um, yeah, it knocked me back a little bit. That f- four or five days really tired. I, I didn't get, fortunately, I didn't get it on my chest. So it didn't go, it didn't become serious breathing wise. But, um, you know, I feel good now, really. I'm just, you know, disappointed this last week that we haven't had six more points with Norwich and, and Huddersfield. You know, I feel that, you know, I don't think they've beaten us, the teams. I think we've lost the games, you know, and and that's a disappointment for me, really. But, Hey ho, we're still all, all healthy and uh, going again. Yeah, that's it. Sounds like us, doesn't it, on the podcast there? We got the next one, on the next one, on the next one. Well, this one will be tough, this one. Uh, you know, Swansea really play a lot of football. I, I watched the game yesterday and, and they won quite comfortably against Forest. Um, I think this was the game before I took over, actually, wasn't it? Swansea at home. Yeah, it was, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it... Uh, you know, if you let them, I mean, if you let them play, you know, they're a, they're a very, very good side. So I'm, I'm hoping I can 
I'd give them a better game than last time I managed against them. Um, because that was in a local derby when I was at Cardiff. And uh, we lost two players the day before the game, right late on in the training session, Tomlin. And um, who was the other one? One of the strikers. And so it, it, we didn't know what to do, really, because we hadn't got the players. And we decided to go with another forward. And they absolutely murdered us in midfield. So hopefully I'll have learned the lesson and I'm sure we can give them a better game on Wednesday. Hopefully. I think, we, I think we've most of us have edged for three points, haven't we? A lot of us settle for a draw. I think so. I think really when you look at them and how they are, the squad, you know, like we said, they, you know, like the Ayus, I think he's on 90 grand a week. It's, a, you know, he's, he's got to be one of the best in the league, if not the best, hasn't he, really? Oh, yeah. Stab him of uh, supply, though, and uh, he's ineffective. Yeah, exactly. And that's what, that's what we've been working on today. And we'll do some more tomorrow. You know, I, I fancy, uh, you know, I've got my, I woke up, not woke up, I, I went to sleep. I didn't do bad Saturday, about midnight. Um, and I knew what my team was about half six in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. So and nothing's changed since then. But I'm not telling you what it is. <laughs> no, don't get it. <laughs> But I'll put it this way, put it this way, none of you will guess what my team is, all right? Not one of you. Yeah. you can know, I can look on them internet things, you know, all these, you know, at least when they're praising my missus, I always show her them. <laughs> but the others, <laughs> the others they're, all, they're all experts, aren't <laughs> no. they? When I, when I get on them and, you know, worn up, he either doesn't know what he's doing or he's picked right team or he's too late with his substitutes or too early with his substitutes or... I do enjoy reading them, but I'm not reading them this week because of bad result. <laughs> I don't, to be fair, I don't think many have, uh, have put, put it down to uh, many mistakes. It's just obviously a couple of uh, individual mistakes. And, and sometimes, like we've just said, it, it, it was just one of those days, really. Nothing seemed to fall for us. Or Well, it's, I, think, I think if you miss chances like we did in that first half hour, you're going to get chances are you're going to get punished. I mean, if we were two or three nil up with simple chances, they would have gone. They would have gone like hell, honestly. And uh, so to go in 2 1 down after with the chances we'd missed was absolute travesty. But that, hey, listen, that's, that's football. It never ceases to amaze me. Um, but you've got to come up with some at all. So, you know, it, I mean, we're playing really a far better team than Uddersfield on Wednesday night. But that doesn't mean anything. I think we've got to, you know, we've got to look after ourselves. And I think the team that I'm going to pick will, will be quite interesting, if I'm honest. He's bringing back Rudy. <laughs> bringing back what? He's bringing back Rudy. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, I did smile when I realised, you know where he's gone? <laughs> yeah, we had a laugh about it last night on the podcast. Oh, he's gone for yeah. peanuts, him. him and I think Shotton's gone as well now to Melbourne. Yeah. And, uh, but when I read that he'd gone there, I, I remember my conversation with him when, uh, when he told them that he, was, he wasn't going to sign. And that, that was my first day. And I pulled him and I said, Rudy, you'll enjoy working for me. I like knocking it up there. We're a big lad, and you, you know, I've always rated you, you know, in the air. I thought I've got to get him on side, and I did all that spiel, and then he said, "Now, nah, I really, I've got to think about my family, Gaffer. You know, I'm going to get a really good contract uh, next year, so my man, my agent, and that says, and can't risk getting injured. So straight away, I said, "Well, listen, Rudy, if that's the case, off you go. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't want to see you anymore." It made our weekend. He said, I can't. I can't go in. Why not? He says, because they'll find me. I said, no, they won't find you. I'm telling you, get off home now. I don't want to see you again. And, well, uh, you know, that, that, was, uh, that was what all Borough fans wanted to hear, to be honest. If yeah. a man's not going to commit himself, yeah, go. I know. And that's, uh, that was, uh, you know, I, I thought, well, that was just the sort of my first day, that. But, you know, I did ring Steve straight away after and said, is it all right? You won't find him, will you? <laughs> uh, no, well, I know. I know from obviously your arrival. I know Jamie's got a question just on how it how it come around. Yeah. yeah so, so Neil, like obviously we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, everyone's locked down. You get the call from uh, from Steve Gibson to come to Middlesbrough. Um, obviously travel over four hundred miles away from home, leaving your family. What was it really? That, I mean, obviously, you touched on earlier. You, you've had a relationship with Steve Gibson. What was what was it that, that really did tempt you to come up? Well, it was him. I don't. It, I wouldn't have gone for anybody else because there was only eight games to go. Um, so I thought I was told at that time I needed twelve. I didn't realise 
from what I gather now, I was already on 1,535 last, you know, no, I am now. So um, I didn't realise at the time, but I remember exactly where I was. I was down in the field um, where I live. I was at the other, uh, the building down there and having a coffee and uh, talking to my daughter. And then I saw this up on my line, Steve Gibson flashing on me. Tell I said, I'll have to go down and I've got, I've got the owner at Middlesbrough talk, wants to talk to me. So she, I said, speak to you later on, darling. And I said, hiya, Steve, how are you? He went, not very good. So I said, well, what can I do for you? He said, I need help. I said, when, <laughs> when do you need it? When do you, he said, I need you. He said, I said, when do you need me? He went, today. So um, I said, well, listen, I'll have to go and see Sharon. I said, because she... I said, you know, I've told you before, Sharon's not keen, you know, not keen and everything. But I said, I'll give you, give me a couple of hours and I'll come, I'll ring you back. Eight, eight, quarter past eight it was in the morning. So I went up to see her straight away, about half eight hour up there. And uh, I told her what had happened. She knows how much I've always wanted to, to work for Steve, really. So I said to her, what do you think, darling? She went, well, you might as well go and help him out and, and you know, keep him up. And then you've done your bit. So I said, oh, all right, love. So I got in my car. It was only 20 to 9. Because I didn't ring him till after 10 o'clock. And have you made up your mind? I said, oh, I'm bloody past Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm past Bristol. I'm on my way. He said, oh, how long will it take? About four hours. I said, and of course, I said, I don't know. That, so he didn't tell me it was six and a half hours. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, I come up and, uh, you know. I mean, I did it straight away, really. We... I did it before I agreed to come to the end of the season before we talked contracts or money or anything like that, you know, and that's why he's got away with murder, really. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's got what he's got. Uh, it looks like you've settled in well, though, especially like with what's going on and the conditions that we're living in and how well you've come up and just adapted with the lads. And then I know Josh had touched on management style in previous podcast when we were talking about you and uh, I know Josh has got a question about your management Yeah I've, uh, I've been a fan of yours for, for many years and hope that Steve Gibson had made the call a lot a lot of years earlier but uh, <laughs> why, why do you think your man's management style has been so successful over your 40 years in management? I just think it's I've been fortunate in the way that I am as a, as a person I'm, I don't um I'm not a, I can't put sessions on and do all these fangled, you know, I just, my, my main strength is I can see what I want during a game and, and I can make players better than what they are. I think, but that's the same, I think in any man, in any company, whatever you do, whether you sell newspapers or work in a garage or you're a, 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 um, a decorator, it's, it's getting the best out of what you've got, really. And I think the way I manage, I enjoy it so much making players better and them feeling good about themselves. And, and then I enjoy watching them progress on the field of play and winning games and seeing what it means to them and usually fans. Um, and then going home at the end of a game where we've done really well. And, uh, and, and that's the big plus for me, the, the com you know, the, the pleasure that it brings me is when I, when they do something like I, I want them to do and and we win games and and uh, nothing changes really i've always you know i've always liked being like that um i think every club i've been at what i've tried to do is when i leave a club i always think it's i want to leave it in a better state than when i went than when i turned up and i think every club i've been at really i've, I've left it in a better state yeah, look, looking at uh, some of the some of the players that have improved under you. Obviously, last season we had the likes of uh, Dyke Seal and Bowler that were possibly going out on loan. Bowler did, and they've come come and worked under you, and they've been highlights of our season so far. Absolutely, I mean Bowler. Um, the first session I saw up here, I said to, we I said to Blackie, "Do you think the same as me?" He went, "Yeah." I said, "Well, let's get him out on loan somewhere." It was bloody useless that morning, the first day I was here. Um, but we hadn't got a left back, really. And, and when we looked round at what we were going to buy or try and get one in, there weren't any. And we did like Bowler. We, we watched him for, for Cardiff um, a few years ago. And so I said to Blackie, well, let's, let's just give him a, 
few weeks to get involved and let's see what we can get out of him if we can't replace him. Um, I mean, he, when he went to Blackpool, he, wasn't, he couldn't get in the team. He was on the bench the last few weeks at Blackpool. So it, it shows where he is. But since he's, since he's been, um, not, I don't mean just loved, but since he's, he's had an arm around him and, and pointing out what his strengths are rather than having to go at what his weaknesses are, um, he's just been a revelation. And I think it has helped that the fans haven't been in with Dick Steele and, and with Bowler. Because if they'd had a bad game early doors and the fans had got on to them, then it might have knocked them off altogether. Whereas now, if the fans come in and he did something wrong and they booed him and had a go at him for a second, that wouldn't bother them now. I think they've got over that now. And I think they'll be top players for Middlesbrough for many years, really. Good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. They have been, they've been like new signings this season. Yeah. Definitely. Good, awesome. yeah. Like, from what we've seen under Woodgate to what we've seen under yourself, it has, it's, it's like you've sprinkled some magic over them and made them into like... Especially Dykesdale for me. I know I rave over him every week on the podcast. I know. But for me, he's got to be in the top three of defenders in the league. Without I, question. I think so, yeah. I mean, um, you know, I'd be very surprised if, if we don't get one or two inquiring about him in January, really, from the Premier League. Because you, you don't get anything better than him in the Premier League with the, for the position that he's doing. And uh, I think Steve Bruce were impressed when we played them in pre-season. You know, he asked me about him. Uh, but I think that'll, you know, I think, I think there'll be a few more players than that. You know, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, Paddy's really play, had a great season so far. And I think Paddy, you know, he's the future of the club as well, really. And you look at him uh, bringing the best out of Dale. You know, Dale was a little bit weak, I thought, last year. But he's strength now. He's he's strong again and a different player. So it's it's great that they've rubbed off on each other, really. And then to two... With Dick Steele and, and Bowles coming together, it's been great. I mean, a talker behind, like Marcus, um, they've really been the, the strength of the side. Um, even though Saturday, obviously, I disappointed in one or two things on Saturday, but you know that's for probably another day. There mm-hmm. wasn't the standing off and stuff like that, was it? <laughs> we all had our little whinge. But uh, on signing players, I know you said there you were looking at left backs. I know Steve. Steve, you have a question on signing players, don't you? Yeah, but basically, Neil, uh, is there a t- particular quality that you look for in a player that gives you the confidence to say that he'll be a good fit for the squad on your managerial style? Or is it you want to see what's out there first before you start picking the players apart? Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't guarantee everything um, when you look at the... You know, I mean, we've got quite a large recruitment and behind the scenes here, a lot of looking at foreign players and etc. But I, pers- I personally like English players. Um, I feel I can deal with them. I think they've got to have my sense of humour um, in around the dressing room area. You know, I think it helps me if if they understand my sense of humour etc. Uh, and then I look for a style of player um, depending on what positions really. Um, I've had all sorts in my career really. I've had the you know the gifted ones that. I didn't think I'd ever manage, you know, like your Tom Lins and and uh, and and, and uh, QPR, Adele Tarab. Um and then I like I do like strong defensive fullbacks. If I'm honest, uh, I've always liked that. Um, I think you've got to have a strong backline, even if you play wing backs. So um, I've always wanted a dominant centre half that can get me goals, but we haven't got one of them. I'm afraid. Um, I like to to do that in this in this league anyhow, and then in, in mobility in midfield. Uh, I'm quite happy with midfield. I don't think I could get much better in in, in the division when they're all playing well. Um, oh, good, Johnny Alson. Yeah, Johnny Alson has been a revelation. I'm, I mean, I, I've uh, I asked him about four or five weeks ago. I told him that I'd never, I never thought he were as good as what he is in my wildest dreams. I always thought he's not, you know, when we're playing against him, you know, look after him, look out for him and close him down, all that lot. But I didn't realise how good he was till I managed him. And that's why I said to him four weeks ago, listen, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, Johnny, but I think you should sign a new contract, you. Uh, and, and by the way, you know, it's for a lot less money. It was, I, I don't want to say that. I didn't say that when it came out. So I don't want you to go board that, but he's, he's, he's been very sensible. He loves the club. And uh, yes, he's on a good contract this year, but he earned that. So it's been great to, to ask him uh, straight away without a, without a hesitation. He said, yeah, I'd love to. 
I love it here. And, uh, and that's when he committed himself. So I thought that were great. Um, you know, I've done Dick Steele as well. And I, I'd like to do two or three more, if I'm honest, in the next few weeks. I'm, I'm working on trying to make sure the club's um, stable for the next few years, really. I know it's been brilliant. It's been brilliant, the news of we get the good results and then we also get a good signing on the Monday. I know. Obviously, well, I hope, I hope if we get a good result on Wednesday, I'll try and do one on, on Thursday then. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll pray for that. All right. And Ellie. <laughs> Dave, have you got a question? Yeah, I was just saying, you mentioned there about where you could stay the first day you met him, saying, you know, that, you know, you know I like to get the ball up the top. When you were looking for a striker in the summer, obviously you brought Tuberak Pom in, who's been a fantastic signing, by the way. We've we've jumped right on board with him. Was it a Rudy style player that you were looking for, a big centre forward to, to feed the ball to, to then feed to left, right, whoever may be running off him? Well, I mean, obviously, what you, what you look at is you look for somebody that's got size and presence in the championship. Uh, and if you can get a bit of pace as well. I mean, I went after Kiefer Moore, um, but I, I don't think he ever thought about coming, really. I think, you know, I think we were probably used a little bit in that, in that respect. Yeah. I think he was always going to Cardiff. Um, but having said that, I was quite pleased. In the, I'm a massive believer in fate, me. What will be, will be. And um, while I've been disappointed, you know, I'm disappointed about midfield player Williams who didn't come with us when we'd agreed everything and I was gutted about that and then you know uh, uh, and then when I looked round I was quite pleased now you know because I would never have gone for Sam Morsi uh, you know in, in a million years at that time and yeah I think Sam Morsi is a better fit for what I was looking for than the original one I was going to pay one and a half million for so it, it, it's fate really and Akpon um, whilst he not, might not be as good in the air as Gestead, for example, um, his mobility and his pace and his desire and wanting to do it is, uh, he, he, I think he's only going to get better him in the next couple of years. I think he's, he's got a good future at the club. Well, I had everything there until you said pace. I yeah, thought he, he was going yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> sit down too much, don't you? Um, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, it's one of them one of them things like me, what they used to say to me, what kind of winger are you? I used to say quick and brainless. <laughs> and I've seen a few of them on a Sunday. Yeah, I know. I was one of them. <laughs> so, John, I know you want to ask about the academy, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, Neil, if you don't mind. Um, what do you think of the academy setup? You know, you've been here five months now. What do you think of the academy setup? And um, have you identified any potential players for the first team? Yeah, well, I mean, we took Sam. We've took Sam yeah. uh, uh, for line, and he's just signed a new contract. We've had a, a, a couple with us in the last few weeks. Um, you know, I think the, I think potentially. I mean, it's got to be the best best academy I've ever seen. This, I mean, I mean that first game or at Brentford, what the game what we started at Brentford, we had four out of the academy in that team. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd never had one at Cardiff, and never looked like having one. The only one they played, they signed him. I think Began, who was a left back, they signed him in uh, from Southampton when he was 18. Are you with me? Yeah. Not through the academy. Whereas here, I can actually see a pathway for these lads over the next few years because there's some some very good players coming through. They're uh, all doing well in. I don't, I don't know all. I don't know all the names, but you know, mm. there's Isaac, who, who, the left, the, the wide player, who I think he looks good and midfield mate, the midfield player. Come on, Jules, what do they call him? Hayden Hack. Yeah, Hayden. He looks, he looks as if he knows what he's doing. I like Dodzy, the right back. I think he'll make a good living. So it might be a good, might be youngest Middlesbrough side in FA Cup. It's drawn tonight, isn't it? Yeah, oh. ball 25. Well, we ought to play a full Middlesbrough side, didn't we? In that. Yeah. Don't yeah. you agree? Yeah. Well, we well, no, roll, no rollicking me then, will you? No. <laughs> <laughs> we hope it, it's a tier one team away from home. We might be able to get some fans in. Yeah, I know, I know. But um, you don't know by then. We might, get, we might be able to put a couple of thousand in, but then if, if we all take us time, be careful till 16th. I think he'll want to do it if he can. He'll want to, you know, if we can lower that rate. I haven't seen what it is at the moment, but um, it has been bad up here. You know, it's been bad up here. And unfortunately, you know, I still can't get over the bloody universities all partying and all that lot. You know, I don't know why they didn't just put barbed wire around and me. Yeah. I can't get an invite. 
and keep them inside. You know, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know we, we just got to we just got to get on with it and look after ourselves. Because the thing about youngsters is they're not going to catch it, and and yet they can give it to people without knowing they've got it. So it's that's why we've got to be so careful, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for answering the question. Mm, it's good that the academy really excited about that. I think that'll be a, you know, I think Steve's investment will pay off over the next few years now. There's more than, you know, I mean, there's four already through. There's, there's, there's got to be at least another four in the 23s that I would imagine will get an opportunity. Brilliant. Mm. I'm just going to touch on your management there, Neil. Like you, you mentioned Tomlin already, obviously, ex player with brilliant skills. You mentioned Tarat already, which is a player that probably everyone watched on Match of the Day purely and simply because how good his ability was and how much you raved over him in your book, which was a very good read, I'll say that. Um, but I want to touch on, have you ever had a player where you thought you've done your bit, but they're not willing to do theirs? A bit like the Ravel Morrison story. Yeah, yeah I've, had a, I've had a few of them. I've been I'm disappointed. Um, I, I think the, the main one I had was a lad called Ashley Stavanovic or something like that. And I had him at Scarbury. He was I took him from non-league, and wow, his ability! I'd never seen how like it, me and and um, uh, and he let me down. And he went home, and you know, and I said to, I remember saying to him, similar to what I've said to one or two people in, in the past. Uh, Look, son, you can go as far as you want to go. You you could either go to the top or you could end up non-league. And he ended up non-league, and he'd been a prison, I think it was. You know, and he lied to he lied to me about somebody taking his car and doing it. You know, and 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 it, so you can't win them all. You know, you try, um, but you know that's that's I'm afraid that's life, isn't it? Unfortunately, you, you know it's. Uh, I mean, uh, Tomlin, I couldn't get the best out of him. I couldn't get him fit really. He, he, yeah, when I left, he played a few games, and they said, "Oh, Warnock's never give him a chance." That rubbish. That you know, a couple of times I was playing him like against Swansea. I was playing him and he pulled up on a Friday morning, said he couldn't play. So I had no option but to not play him, you know. And then the, then the fans were saying, uh, you know, Warnock's not picked him again. Um, you know, you can't win with that, really. You've just got to get on with it. But in the right area, with a good number 10, Tomlin would be a good player. But, you know, you, you've got to have the right team for that. Adele, same. We had to have really good, we had really good two midfield players at, at QPR, uh, Forlan and, uh, and Sean Derry. And um, and then we could give him, we could get away with him and let him do his tricks, you know, up there. Yeah. Uh, and that paid off that year. Incidentally, by the way, I've got four boxes of books coming up now. How many is there in each? 160 books going in the shop with my autobiography. I'm going to sign them all for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that was coming. I'm going to give the proceeds to, to a charity, though, so it's not for me. So oh, I'm sure, I'm sure Joe, Joe in the shop will be pleased to have them. That I've got them up. I didn't realise I got all these books that I hadn't used, and we found them when we were clearing the gar garage out before I come up here. She said, what are we going to do with all these? I said, I don't know, darling. We just have to go to a car boot sale or something. And, <laughs> and then this has come up. So I said to George, you want to sell them and we'll get money to a charity? She said, oh, yeah, we will. Oh, we'll definitely be plugging that and... Uh... Like you say, I've had a read of it and I recommend it to these lads straight away. As soon as you signed, I said you'd need to read his book. Yeah, well, it's, it's good. It's lovely when you do that. I am tempted. I've got one or two people asking me if I'll do a second part autobiography. Because the autobiography, I think it only goes to about 2000 and I don't know. Is it good to shit? I can't remember whether it goes back up to shit. Up to shit. I think it's about 2011, 12, 13, something like that. I can't remember. We'd, uh, love a, we'd love a fairy tale ending, Neil. I know, that's what I think. I think I'll wait to see if we get an ending before I do the beginning. Uh, I could do a book about this year if you want. Just a, just a 12 months diary. There's enough in that to, to be a good read. I'd have, oh, like it, I'd have to get it censored by Steve. <laughs> I'm sure he'll let it go. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we had a few, when we put it out that we had, we were fortunate to have you on the podcast. We had a few questions asked by the fans and some of the questions came in. I got one off. I'm just pulling it up now. It was off uh, Andy Bell. And he actually said, which player was you uh, most surprised by when you arrived on Teesside? Probably, probably, well, surprised when I, when I think about his ability, probably Johnny Housen. I mean, I always thought he were good. 
I didn't know he was the best. He's the best, probably the best midfielder I've had. And I've been to 41 years now. And I've, yeah. had, some good, I've had some good players. Um, you know, Ali Fallen was special at QPR with his left foot. But Johnny's got a bit more Sean Derry and, and Ali Fallen together. Um, he's got that, you know, he can, he's, got, he's got the full package, really. Um, but all of them surprised me, if I'm honest. Fletcher surprised me. Um, Ashley, you know, Ashley Fletcher surprised me. And then, uh, obviously, the two lads, Dick Steele and, and Bowles, um, you know, to get what I got out of them, I'm, I'm really, you know, really pleased about that. Um, when you look elsewhere, you know, I know, I know what Jed can do. It's just whether he'll do it. And I've said to Jed the same as what I said to that guy at Scarborough. You will decide how far you go, Jed, with your ability. You'll either go to the very top of the in, in the Premiership, or you'll just drift away in the next five years. It's up to him, really. He's got everything in his locker. Yeah, Neil, Neil, we were talking about Jed last night on the podcast and, and, and we were thinking that he's been more impressive coming off the bench than when he started. Um, I don't know what your thoughts on that are because obviously he's, um, he, he's, got, he, he's got a lot of ability, lightning pace, and when he comes on second half of matches, he seems to have uh, fresh legs and he, he makes more of an impact than he does when he starts. Yeah, well, that was a, I mean, on Saturday, the first of the goal, the first goal, his run, he didn't get the goal. I mean, Marv scored it. But that's the first time I've ever seen him do what I want him to do. And that sprint, when the ball's gone out wide from the other side and get in the box. And if it had come across, he'd got a chance of a goal. And I said that to him today. I said, that's what you've got to do every time. You know, you've got to have that desire to get in the box. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, you can't put that in. But it, it shows he can do it because he's got the energy. He's just got to have that desire, really. And... Uh, Hopefully that will, you know, the, the, the penny will drop. Good. Steve, have you got uh, some more fans' questions? I do, yeah. Um, I say Callum Jones got in touch with me. He said, if you can compare the squad uh, from when you first started, your first day, to what it is now, is there a difference that you've seen since you've came in? Is there anything you've changed to enforce that difference? Bloody hell, where do you start on that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> is this a plus night tour? <laughs> I mean, there, were, there were two or three times last year when I went home at night after the game and got me nice Isle of Isla scotch out. Uh, and I doubted whether we could stay up, if I'm honest. Um, you know, I've always been had aggressive sides and people doing this and that. And, you know, we were losing games and, and, and really not putting up much of a fight. Your Cardiff and your Bristol City and places like that, you know, at home. Um, and it was a worry. Uh, but fortunately, on the training ground, we managed to get enough organisation and discipline to get the away results, which kept us up. This year's a different game. When you have a summer, not a summer, but when you have a few weeks, you start afresh, you've got a chance. It doesn't matter who, how many players... Like, yeah, I'd have liked three or four more players. Um, but you have to do what you've got. You know, you have to deal with what you've got, not moan about it and get on with it. And so, you know, the challenge was making what we've got better than what they are and trying to find a system where we could compete at every level with anybody in the league. And that's what we've got. Yeah, you can say we don't score enough goals. And the last two games, you can say we don't bloody defend well, you know. Um, so you, you'll always have an opinion on that. But... The lads are honest. They're they're a good group. Um, there's no bad eggs, you know. There's no nobody. I'd think you know. Even you know the ones that need to show more on on the field of play. They're not bad people. They they're just a little bit naive. Some of them. Um, and uh, and it's been great. I am frustrated. Yeah, because I'm frustrated. Because Norwich, um, Huddersfield, Brentford away, Blackburn away. You know, without being, without being over the top, those points we should be we should be out on top now, mm. and and that's with the squad we've got. Watford yeah. away, Bournemouth at home, we dominated in both them games. I know. Not, not so it, you're bound to be frustrated, but it's like when Steve when Steve asked me to come, and then at the start of this season, because we hadn't signed a lot of players, um, I remember Steve saying to me. Mid-table, you know, if you could establish us in mid-table, are you with me? 
in, in that respect and, 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 and not be down at that other end fighting all the time. And I said to him, I'm 71, Steve. I don't do mid-table. We've got to try. We've got to try and get up there while I'm young, you know, while I'm not bloody dying. And um, so we had a laugh about that. And he understands, you know, I mean, we are mid-table, but I don't want to be there. And I don't want to just, just take my money and have a job to be there if that makes sense. So I do get frustrated because I know we should be up there. Um, and, and I know how hard I'm working and how hard, you know, Kevin and, and Ronnie are. So that, that's the frustration. But, you know, it's better looking at a team thinking we should have done that, we should have won that, won that, won that, one, rather than we, we might have got a point there or we might have got a draw there. Are you with me? I don't feel like that. I don't feel any negative thoughts. I just feel that we should have won every game, if I'm honest, since the start of the season. Quite possible, Neil. How uh, it, the, those last eight games, we could see that the that the confidence in the squad was was at, at bottom. How how do you collectively raise that uh, raise the spirit, raise the confidence? Because, like you said, those last eight games, it was like from elation to dejection. You know, we were we were safe I mean, we one gonna... game, we were safe one game, we were down the next, and it, it, it did. It went to the last game. Um, well, I'm going to, I'm, I'm a Sheffield United fan and I'm going to Hillsborough on the last game thinking, if this went totally wrong, we could have an ex-manager who's not the most popular at, at a club which is not the most popular with me, sending us down. Can you imagine what that yeah. would have been like? Yeah. Um, so there were all sorts of, of sort of pressures on you. But once that season ends, you've got to forget, you forget about that then. I think to myself, every summer, the, the, the boards are wiped clean. Whoever we're playing against, yeah, the team's coming down, they'll have a lot of money, so what? They'll have a lot of money, they'll have a lot of players, they might have more arguments with the managers because a lot of them have been left out. You know, whereas we, we've only got a small squad, we've got decent players, they're listening to us, they, they're taking on board tactical things. Uh, the fans have been realistic. Most of them, you, you're going to get the odd one that thinks we should be in Europe, um, you know, <laughs> things like that. But most of them are realistic, and most of them pro would probably accept me mid table. But mm -hmm. I think we've got to start again. I think Wednesday night's got to be the first game of the season, personally. Now, I've seen what's gone on. I'm disappointed last weekend. I was, I was gutted after the Norwich game because how we, how we didn't win that game, I'll never know. So now we've got to start again. We're going to get injuries. Um, we're going to have, I think we've got a disappointment, which I'll probably tell you tomorrow. I better not tell you tonight. Um, disappointment with, with, uh, with Grant Hall. Um, so we've got, we've, got, we've got one or two little niggles and things which aren't helping. But whatever, I'm not bothered about that. Whoever comes in will do well. And we're going to try and give Swansea a right good game on Wednesday. Make, sure, make no mistake about that. Good, good to hear. On team selection, Neil, uh, I've got a question from one of our followers, um, Ian Jones. Uh, he wants to know that we can all pick a team on on a Saturday morning as football fans. Um, do you ever listen to phone-ins and podcasts and think, I, I, you know, uh, he's not he's not far wrong. I might go with his idea. Or, or uh, no, I never. Wrong? I never think that. I do think when I read, I only read. Can, I can't tell him. Can I? Can I tell that? Yeah. What is it? FFT what? Fly me to the moon. Fly me to the moon. <laughs> That's the only one I can get on mine. And so I do read some of them and one of them, two of them's quite funny, if I'm honest. I wish I could just go back on and when they talk about my missus and that and, and talk to them, tell them the truth. Um, <laughs> I don't have to get on them, so uh, I don't have to reply. So I'll not bother with that. But um, yeah, I think um, team selection, you're never going to, you're never going to get it right with everybody. Um, that's why it's so much more difficult now managing than it were when I started, because there were no, there were no podcasts, there were no uh, fans forums, there were no phone-ins, you know, 6069 or whatever, all that lot where they used to six or whatever it is. And, and, and so at the moment, everybody's, everybody's an expert now. You know, they sit in front of a computer and what they write, they believe is the, right, is the correct thing, you know. And you've, you've got thousands of them. So, you, you, you know, you, 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 chances are, when you look at them all, there's one of them going to be far wrong. And then the other 999 probably useless, you know. 
Um, but I do, I do, yeah, I do um, read them now and then when I've got nothing else to do. Um, you know, because I, I like reading the newspapers and things like that and what have you. But fans, it's always nice to see what they, what they talk, you know, what they talk. Sometimes they talk a load of rubbish and I'd like to answer it by, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, if you knew the ins and outs, you wouldn't say that stupid thing. And But I, I have to bite my tongue and go and get a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> well, we, well, on a Tuesday, we could, you know, we'll send you the podcast, and uh, you can you can have you can rip into me on a Wednesday if you want to. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't listen, I don't, I don't, I don't rip in. I think everybody should have an opinion. Um, when I was at Cardiff, it got a bit nasty uh, at times, and I didn't want that. I just that's why I thought let's get out. I don't need it anymore. This, I know, it, I know that the fans forums are only a small element, don't I? And I know because I've had loads of letters when I left Cardiff, and loads of all sorts of on, on emails and that. And I know that the 90% of the fans loved me when I were there, are you with me? Realised what I'd done because the club was in such a mess when I took over. To get them all together, the fans of the harmony with the board and everything else, took some doing. And we did that and got to the Premier League as well. And, and I'm saying it not dissimilar, but the fans weren't like that here. But it was a little bit fragmented a little bit when I came. And I think now we're all together again. I mean, you've got the best owner you'll ever have. I mean, I, you know, I think he's unbelievable, mate. And I, and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. I've always wanted to show Steve Gibson, and I'm not being conceited. I've always wanted to show him how good I am and how much he's missed. What he's missed, really, by not having me 10 years ago and yeah. 15 years ago, you know. And, and even now I keep saying to him, you know, but... Um, we'll but be that, in Europe then. But I know, but that's good, you see, because um, I think he appreciates the same thing. Are you with me? Managers, they can't talk to the the, 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 the owner or, or everybody. They can't. Usually you're afraid. No, not afraid, but you want to, you know, you want to say the right thing and you want to keep your job. Whereas I'm in a different situation in the fact that <clears throat> probably the club need me more than I need them, if that makes sense. Um and if I got the sack tomorrow, so would it, would it worry me? You know, would it worry me? But because it's Steve, and, and I know we're limited because we haven't got a lot of money, and you can't just keep put, chucking money in when, when you have no fans coming in and no, no hospitality and that. You can't ask him to keep, you know, bloody bankrolling everything with what he does. He already costs him millions every year. So I've got to think about that and help him. But at the same time, I want to be successful, me. He knows I haven't got long left. It's not like I'm your age, you lot. I've, I've not got long left, me. So I've, I've, got to, I've got to do what I'm doing yesterday. I can't think about what can happen tomorrow, next year, two years' time. You know, I, I can't think about that. So it's, it's, an, it's a very unique situation which won't happen again, really. I'm sure you'll get a manager that, that can, could do four or five years if things went well in the, in the future. But... At the moment now, I want to be successful uh, with whatever I've got, whatever money, whatever we haven't got or we haven't got. You won't get me moaning because I know that he's doing his best. And so we've just got to get on with that. Yes, fans might think we, we need that and that and we've got to spend. Why don't Gibson, I read that FF, why don't Gibson put his hand in his pocket and give him Warnock this and go Warnock that? I bet they don't put their bloody hand in the pocket. These guys on the computer. You know, so it's we've all got to be realistic and know that we're all... Steve wants us to be successful. Make no mistake about that. Uh, and so we're all in it together. And because I want to do it this year, that's why I'm disappointed at times. But I'm going to work my butt off to make sure we try and do it this year. You know, try and get us higher up in the, in the table and, and look at that top six rather than looking downwards. Yeah, we were fortunate to have a meal in February with, with Steve Gibson and Woodgate and Robbie Keane and the open and honesty of Mr. Gibson then and how realistic he was in where he wanted the club to be. And then since you've come in, it's like, like you've said already, we're all in this together now. It's like he's brought everyone back together. Where in February when we were actually having the meeting with Gibson, you could see the how we'd spread out the fans had started to turn a little bit, this, that, and the other. But now, you can actually feel inside a town, you can feel on the social media pages how much, I know I'm singing your praises, but how you've brought the team back together. 
It's not just the team, it's the fans That's as well. Thing, I think I think we are united now, aren't we? I, I just I don't I don't I've got to tell you, I don't blame Jonathan. I think Jonathan really to have a first job like that, I feel his biggest mistake was not having a Neil Warnock with him. That's we, what we, I feel. We I said that, Neil. We said he that ourselves. That seen it all and done it all at this level, because it's a hard level. And to do it without any experience, nothing to look back on, God, it's a hard, it's a difficult job. So <laughs> I think Jonathan, you know, probably did the best he could at the time. But it, it, when things go turn the other way, it is hard. You can't see a way out and you've got nobody to talk to that's done it all and seen it all and what have you. And it, it just becomes a, a poisonous chalice, really. So I, I don't blame Jonathan. I just wish, I wish that I could have sort of worked with him and tried to help him for a while. But it, it wasn't possible, that, you know. So, and, and he will learn. If he gets another job in the next you know, couple of years, he'll have learned from that and he'll have gone forward. Because the only way you learn in football is getting the sack. That's the only way you learn. You know, we've all had it. And I always, I mean, I remember buying champagne when me and Mick Jones got sacked at Notts County. I remember saying to Mick, get the local paper down and get some of my champagne. We got champagne and we popped it and celebrated getting the sack. <laughs> you know, we, and I remember because we took them to Premier League, Notts County, from Division Three to top flight in three years, two years, really. And, and then... And then I turned down Chelsea and, and Sunderland and all sorts of clubs. And then he sacks me in January, you know, which is absolutely. And I said to him, I remember saying to Derek Pavis, who sadly has passed away now, but I remember saying to him, biggest mistake Notts County will ever do. And now I look at them where they are, you know, mm -hmm. Notts County. They're in non-league. And uh, I, don't take any, I don't take any pleasure in that, but... You know, what we did there were unbelievable. And uh, it, it's, you know, one of my best best ever jobs, really, that. But it whets your appetite, that, you know, to be successful. You you know, I, I still, even now, I know I've had a record eight promotions, but I'd love to be in the mix for a ninth. I'm not saying we will be, but it won't be for the lack of training. Uh, we will yeah. be there, I believe. I know, John, you, uh, you had a question about the area, didn't you, Tennille? Yeah, yeah, I did. Neil, you've been, like, you said, like I said earlier, you've been on Teesside uh, five months or so. Um, now, this, this area gets absolutely slated um, by the national media, uh, and it's usually done by people who've sit in London, who've never, who've never, never been up here and, and seen what we've got. What is it about this area that you like? Because I know you do a lot of, a lot of uh, local stuff. <laughs> Listen, I'd have, I'd have probably been one of them that's late today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I never thought it was as good as this. I mean, I were always told the training ground was decent. But decent in the word. It's, um, it is unbelievable, the training ground. And Rockcliffe or the hotel. Oh, my goodness, me! I've never seen out like it. Um, you know, I remember saying at a press conference, the only thing they've not got the players is a pair of carpet slippers in the dressing room. They've got everything <laughs> else. Um, but the area, I love the area. I love cycling. Um, yes, I, it's only electric bike, but it, I can do 50, you know, I usually do about 30 to 40 to 50 kilometres a day for a few hours and take my flask with me. And it's all flat where I am. It's brilliant for me. There are a few hills, but when you've got electric bike, it's not so bad. And I still do the exercise on the flats, turning it off and that. So I do love that. And Sharon, you know, we just got one, we just bought one from, uh, for Sharon from Darlington. And um, we've been out two or three times now. So I love that. I like drive. we like driving out to different places, even though it, obviously it's difficult now, but you know, Barnard Castle and, and places like that. We, uh, I, I went to a place called Beedale um, a couple of weeks ago, only because my mum and dad, I remember a picture of my dad, on the honeymoon at B Dale on his 350 Royal Enfield, <laughs> stood on, on the bridge there. And I said to Sharon, I think we can try and find that bridge. And yeah, we think we did. Um, so B Dale, B Dale were nice and uh, went up to uh, on the beach at Saltburn with the dogs. You know, it's there's some lovely places, isn't there? Well, that's it. We've got, we've got the course, we've got the countryside, but let, let them down south there still knock us down and we'll just enjoy it on our own. I think so. I mean, I don't think, I mean, when you have been here, 
when you've had a look round, dearie me, you've got you've got everything really, haven't you? Within within ten or fifteen minutes. I mean, we love. We've been in Darlington tonight. Me and my missus. She went to to the vets to get some, so we popped into Square and had a coffee in Nero and had a little walk. You know, walk around that cobble Square. So when that'll be open, I think, won't it, on Wednesday? Aye. Right. So we'll no doubt be uh, be going around the, there's some shops in there, and I know. Um, Karen, my secretary, is taking me to one or two in in uh, Middlesbrough because I've got to get some presents in me. I'm not, I can't do it on computer having them delivered. I've got to go and pick them, me. Do you, if you enjoy a coffee, uh, me uh, fiance works in Muffin Break in Middlesbrough. If you if you want to pop in, I'll make sure she uh, I'll make sure she gets you one. Yeah, I'll, I'll take you up on that. Muffin yeah, just just, just just mention Josh. Josh. What's her Amy, name? Amy. Amy. I'll remember. My daughter's Amy. Yeah, Amy at Muffin Break Middlesbrough. Get get yourself in. She, she'll sort it out. Okay, Paul. Remind me. Re- recommended places as well. If Paul's there, tell him to take it to Great Ayton. Great Ayton. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Uh, village or to walk? Yeah. Around? Yeah. Village, village. Yeah. Get the dogs. What and the shops and that or not? Just little like it's just a little village, little country village. So lovely How place. Far? How far from Darling? From Rockcliffe? Twenty oh, minutes. 20 minutes with that. Well, we might go then in the next two days. My missus said, well, can we go for a little drive? There's yeah. a little street. A little don't street. tell anybody they might be waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, Neil, I'm just going to go back to them first eight games. And you said already about your uh, favourite job, one of your favourite jobs in Notts County. I know Steve's got a question on, on these first eight games. Come on, Steve. Yeah, obviously, you've, you've joined, you joined us with eight games to go. We were all fearing reg- relegation, dropping into the third tier, something, especially my generation, hasn't seen, you know, ever. So, you know, I just wanted to know if this was your toughest job, keeping this squad up. I know you said, you know, where do you start when, when, the first, when you first laid eyes on the squad? Was this your toughest job? If not, what was your toughest job in your 40-plus your years career? I think, I, th- I, th- I think it was close. I don't, I don't think... I mean, at Rotherham, everybody expected us to be relegated. We were six points adrift. We 12, 15 games, something like that. Yeah. So that probably nobody really thought we could get out of that. Whereas here, you think middle of a massive club, they can't go down uh, and all that lot. But when I come in and I looked at the team, it, it, was, nowhere, it was nowhere what I thought it was, if I'm honest. And it was all about trying to make players give enough to get a result, really, uh, and get out of this situation and never be in it again. Because it's a hard league, you know, Division 1 to get out of. Some big clubs have been down there a few years. Um, and it's a hard league. So, it, first of all, it was just making sure we stayed up. And, and it, like, that, was, that was as difficult because I couldn't see us getting a result at home. There were some difficult games away from home, Reading and, and, and Sheffield Wednesday coming up. Um, and we couldn't really come out in the press and say that. We couldn't really say to anybody, wow, we're in, you know, we are right in it. We thought we've got to keep it in-house and be really positive and everything. And, and that, that was it. But it was a massive, massive relief um, to get the win at Reading and then Sheffield Wednesday. You know, it, it, I, I couldn't, you know, when they told me, um, I can't remember now what the scoring was at, on the last game, uh, you know, it was it, we were really pleased because we went down, didn't we? We were one nil down at Sheffield Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, you know, it was good. It was good to come back like that, and uh, and it's you don't want to be in that situation. And and you know, listen, I, I can't tell you what the future holds and the rest of the season here, but we, we don't want to be at that bottom end. We want to make sure we're up that top end, and and that's why I get frustrated at times. Um, but it's only because I want the lads to fulfill what I know they can do really and it's so it's still you know it's still there I, I, you know I've got to come up you know like I, I know what I want to do on Wednesday night I knew what Saturday night what I want to do and then it was like persuading Blackie and Ronnie to let me go ahead and do it <laughs> 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 which they have done they've agreed so uh, we are in unity so uh, it'll be interesting to see how we go on on Wednesday I'm not the fault of this team selection me you've, you've sold me here well listen you know, what we ought to do is write it all down. If anybody gets it, they ought to get it like, I'll give them like 100 quid or something like that, right? But to do that, 
they've got to put into my charity, you know, into that Butterwick for me award. Oh. We're on 9,100 now, so I'm, I'm looking to you lot now to raise eight or 900 quid this week to make, okay. it, up, make it up to 10 grand right. for the week because it's absolutely fantastic that if they've done that. Um, you know, it's a great, a great cause. And I, with the, I know they set out to earn 2,000 and I think it was 9,100 today earlier. So if we can get up to 10 grand, I'll be absolutely chuffed. Um, and I, I, like I say, we've got 20 runners up prizes to send out with all signed of the players signing it as well. So I thought, you know, we can't just send one prize. So we've done that as well. So I'm hoping that we can, we can generate that other, other, other 900 quid, whatever. We'll it push is. it on social media. Push for it you. on for you, will you? Yeah, oh, definitely. Massively. Well, Neil, as the seven o'clock's coming up and the hour's been done, if you want to stay with us after we, uh, after we finish off live here, you can stay with us to watch the uh, FA Cup draw, but that's up to you. Is that what's on in 10 past? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 10 past seven, the FA Cup draw. Can we have a, can we have a quick prediction of uh, who you think we'll get, Neil? Uh, Chorley. <laughs> Chorley, no. <laughs> I'll tell you now, that, that was the best result of last round. Chorley beating Peterborough. And we, Chorley helped us. We trained there when we played... Uh, who did we play? Who? Blackburn. And we trained there. And uh, my old chief exec, Terry Robinson, who, who was at Sheffield United with me, he helping out there behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, I just said to him, you know, we can bring you some luck and all that. But bloody hell, I mean, that's unbelievable to get to third round. I hope they get a Premier League club. I'd love yeah. it, mate, Charlie. And they let us train on pitch as well. You know, they let us train on pitch and groundsmen were good and hospitality. So uh, I love people, you know, places like that when I go back to my Northern Premier League days you see that scar here that were I, I, I could have done a goalkeeper when I was playing for Burton I could have gone through and done him but I pulled out I thought I won't hurt him and he smashed my arm the goalie that were at Marine now they're in Cup and all so I might get bloody Marine away get me home back <laughs> 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 so it's interesting, isn't it? I might just do that. I might come back to you when I've got a cup of coffee. Can I get would, a cup of coffee? Yeah. Wouldn't would Neil Warner be able to pull out of that? Will we be able to see cup draw anywhere? Um, we can put it on a telly through there. Have they got a telly? On this telly here? No. no, through my office. I might just do that. I'm not in a rush. I'll go get my coffee. All right. Neil, can I just ask you? Um, obviously, you've touched on a couple of times um, that you obviously you've done a watch around the corner. Um, but you did mention you, you obviously you're on is it eight promotions if if we were up there and we, we got another one in there would you be t I mean what's it going to take for you to stay would you be tempted to stay then if we got up or if we're in the playoffs I think that's quite a way you know when you get to my age son you don't look beyond next month <laughs> <laughs> you, you think I hope I'm here in January um, <laughs> you know you don't you don't look that far ahead really um, I ju I'm just loving it I love it, absolutely. My missus is the main one. Um, Sharon's loved it. She's never felt like this about anywhere else. She's come up here and living with us and dogs are loving it and uh, William's up here. So I've never seen her as happy as this. And if she's happy, then, you know, I'm, I'm happy because I do enjoy it. I do enjoy working for him, for Steve. Uh, the club itself is fabulous. I look at the fans everywhere I go. The fans are super. I know we're doing all right and... And, and the fans are bound to be like that. But, you know, you can you get a feeling about a place. You get a feeling about fans. I've always thought it's my kind of club. You know, I've been on a team for bloody 15 years now about, about coming over. And, uh, and, and like, you know, it's great when I, when I see everybody, what they're saying. And, and um, I, I've always think that I, I'm, I'll always work better for people that want me to be there. And, and I always think, and I, I never want to outstay my welcome, if that makes sense. So, I mean, let's be fair, lads. At 71, and a job becomes available, it doesn't say a lot. It doesn't say a lot about managers that are available, does it really? When you think, if I'm 71 and still, you know, I mean, in the last few weeks, I could have had another job. Well, no. we, were, we, we were saying, Neil, obviously we had Tony Pulis and uh, a lot of the media call him a dinosaur. And then we said... What uh, did they call me then? 
And that's what we were going to ask you. <laughs> if, if Tony Pulis is the dinosaur, what's Neil? What is Neil Warner? And, uh, I look a bit younger than Tony, though, don't I? Oh, you no. certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it's just. Uh, I mean, if you lads it now, if you if if you, I, I can see on the, on the fans thing. What happens if Warnock goes? Who will we have? And then I look at some of the names. Oh, I do laugh. <laughs> Can I just ask as well, uh, Neil? Did uh, Kevin Blackwell get his kitchen finished? Get him what? Did he get his kitchen finished, Kevin Blackwell? I don't think he's ever had his kitchen finished, has he? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, he did. I he did. I he did say that. He swore didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I hope you didn't put that out for swearing. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Blackie's Blackie. He's he's. Uh, We've always worked well together. Ronnie Jepson's an absolute gem. He works with the with the strikers, and Kev's, you know, he's the meticulous one with us. Um, but and I've always, you know, I just trust them too. So I mean, they've loved it. They, they've loved um, coming up. Obviously, Ronnie, he's, he's desperate for me to keep going because he keeps him in a job. <laughs> uh, Blackie will do whatever Blackie wants to do, really, when when I finish or what have you. But. Um, I mean, Sharon's the main, the main person to keep me going. Listen, we might have a chat, chat in a few months. You might not want me to stay because <laughs> football changes. <laughs> football changes that much, you know. I just, I hope you do. I hope we can continue improving, um, and we can get up there challenging because that's what I want to do uh, this year. And uh, whatever, whatever January throws at us, players-wise, you know, I do think I'd like to do a, a little bit of business, but. You know, I, you, I can't. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. Um, I, I know the type of player I'd look for, um, but whether we can get them, it, it's, a, it's a bad, it's a difficult wind of January because everybody's after the same type of players. You know what I mean? All right. Well, hopefully we can have a chat in January, Neil. Why not? I don't mind. <laughs> there we go. So we'll keep it. I'm, I'm not doing no. If, I mean, at night time, if I'm not doing it, I'll come here on a regular basis, won't I, Jose? Oh, well, that's great. When I look at you lots <laughs> up there, I realise how good looking I am. Hey. <laughs> yeah. That's good, that's in it, Jose, yeah? I'm going to invite him on the dog walks with us, Josh. Make me feel yeah. Sat, sat, sat the mornings, we normally go for a little walk before, uh, before the what, match. What dog have you got, Josh? Uh, it's Danny's dog. We take Bell to... Uh, Labrador, Dan? Coco Labrador. Oh, well. I had two. In fact, there were a big article on Saturday in, in Sun, I think it was, middle page, with a picture of me and dogs. Yeah, Donald and Monty. Ah, uh, that's it. I, I had a, sh a Shih Tzu and a Norfolk Terrier. And, uh, and they, they love it up here. Bloody hell, we, we go down. I mean, the Shih Tzu gets absolutely mucked up because it just does. But where the Norfolk Terrier can go through all mud and we get home and it's no, no tonic, you know. So it's... Uh, she has to lift him up to the bathroom to, to give him a good... But there's some <laughs> lovely walks. Lovely walks around here, isn't there? I'm oh, hoping, we've got, uh, we've got some, some, some cracking local parks as well. I know. I'm hoping on, like from Wednesday onwards, Saltburn, when we went up to Saltburn last time, we had, we had fish and chips in that restaurant on front. Oh, yeah. Sea view. Yeah, they were scumptious then. So whether if that's open again after Wednesday, well, then we might have to pop up there on my day off. And uh, oh, ring, ring, ring up and book a table. It's oh dear, they were fish. Them they were really good fish and chips. Them, although there is a good one in Irworth. You know, I yes. ring them down, down in Irworth. I have them on, on a Friday night sometimes because I always use my dad. You always used to have fish and chips on a Friday. You I know? was surprised. I was surprised you didn't take the uh, the players to Scarborough for pre season meal as well. Mm, I know that that would probably be next year. Scarborough. Oh, oh, so oh. Is that so he's staying on. He's staying on. He's just confirmed. Well, no, if I'm not, I'll recommend it. I'll fix it up before the end of the season, you see. And they can't get out of it. There's our podcast exclusive. Thanks, Neil. Yeah. Hey, it just shows you, doesn't it? When I were at Scarborough, which is 86-7, and we got promotion, first game we played were Wolves. Oh, that's right. I remember this incident that you're going to talk about. Steve yeah. Bull scored twice. We drew two each and the kid fell through the roof. <laughs> yeah. asked me, they asked me what I thought about it. I said, well, if he's a brummie, as long as he lands on his head, he'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but 
it just shows you where are Scarborough. They went with the Art at League. None that were travesty. Are are the are the council and that let let Scarborough go under. Unbelievable. And then Wolves are now in top four, aren't they? Top five. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. The way football goes and you just don't know what's around corner, do you? You know, I think that's, that's, thing, that's why we're so lucky with Steve Gibson. We we always know, you know what I mean? We we've spoken to him at length at times and we've always said we'll always we'll always have a football club as long as Steve's around, you know what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. And that's why you've got to keep and that's why I, I think all you lot have got to make sure when you get these people having a go at him, they, they put them in the place. And they do, you know, they generally do. If I'm honest, when I read it, somebody will follow a bad comment and said, you know, think better the, better the devil you know and the grass is always greener, you know. And it, and it is. Blinking at you. When you look at some of the owners in clubs now, oh my. I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody in, in the current football league that actually sings their owner's name apart from us. No, probably not. Probably not. And I mean, he says to me last week, when we went to, uh, where did we go? Huddersfield. He said that that place, that pack, they would have been absolutely packed out behind that goal. He said, you've never seen out like the away fans when they turn up. So, uh, you know, I think he was disappointed that there's no fans in, you know, because it, it does make a difference, doesn't it? Away oh, it certainly does. does. So I'd just oh, like to say a massive thank you to everybody that got in touch with us for this recording. She's and a massive that. thank you to Neil Warner for joining us. Also to Red Army Radio for giving us this platform to do it. And thank you to everybody else. Up the butter.